Welcome to the two minute rig video. Might take a bit longer than that, but we'll try and make it two minutes, eh? Um, so we're gonna talk about hemp rigs. Obviously, there's loads of different styles of fishing hemp. Normally, it's a method associated with roach fishing. And I'm gonna talk about my rigs that I use on local drains, um, shallow drains. If you was fishing a river, it might be a different story. You might be going for a slightly uh, slightly different shape and heavier rig. Um, as long as it's that slim profile and a decent enough bristle to hold a piece of hemp off the bottom. Um, I tend to use a pattern that is sort of exclusive to tackle and baits, and that is what we call the trill float, um, which is a bit of a Mickey take on the name of the small hemp at the minute. Um, this float is a cane bristle a wire stem and a nice little teardrop body. Um, the reason why I choose this shape is you can hold it back in sort of light, steady flow and you can run it through at pace as well. The cane bristle, just because it fishes the same every time and it's nice and buoyant enough to withstand a, a big piece of hemp or if you were on one of them really good days where you need a, a, grain, um, a tear on the hook. So I'm gonna show you how to tie this rig. First thing to consider is the length of line that you're going to have between the float and your pole tip. In the drains, on the drains I should say, we do get tampered by the wind. So the windier it is, the thinner the line I tend to go for, or the lightest line I can get away with. For example, if it was, um, I'm going to have a long, length, a long lash or a long piece of line between my float and my pole tip because the venue might be clear or I'm on a venue that's flowing, I'll tend to go for an 011 um, main line just because the wind doesn't affect the presentation the lower the diameter the less it's going to get caught by the wind so that's the uh, main line diameter the main line I use is tournament rig line it's a line I've been using now for about three or four seasons I can't fault it um, obviously being in the shop we see tons and tons of different lines I use it for all my fishing, whether it be commercial, natural venues, fantastic line. So if you haven't tried it, definitely give it a go. So the first thing I do is take my float, which this in this case is a five by 10 trill. I'm just gonna put that on the line. So just put that through the eye of the float. It's got a nice, decent eye on that. And then I'm gonna put the silicon rubbers on. Some people put three pieces of silicon, but I always tend to go for four just that's what I like to do, it's my personal preference. And the silicon that I use is the Colmic, it's just called High Tech Silicon. It's quite expensive, but I find this is brilliant. It doesn't ever split, um, it's just fantastic. Obviously there's loads of other different silicons available on the market. Um, obviously there's the clear silicon, but this I just find fantastic. So I'm just gonna put four, three tiny pieces of silicon on, or not, reasonably small three and then the, the fourth piece of silicon I always like to have it at least double the length of the others just so when it slides over the end of the the wire or carbon whatever stem float you're using it just stops less well stops tangles basically so that's the four pieces of silicon on the line Then I'm just going to slide, float down, and just push all the silicon up the wire stem. So there's the silicon on the float. What we're going to do now is just going to slide that up, not too far, and again, nice little heavy weight, which we've made out of just an old glass and some sand, which is always nice and handy, just stop the everything applicated on a tight line is always going to be much easier than on a slack line. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the shot on. Um, this is a 5 or 10 trill, so it pretty much will take 5 number 10s. And I'm going to use shot for my rigs. Some people use styles. When to use styles ahead of shot, personal preference. Some people prefer shot for everything. Uh, for this particular rig, I want it with shot because it's only a light rig, so we haven't got loads of, line, uh, loads of shot up the line. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to 
just put five number tens on. One. And you notice I'm putting them all together at this bottom end of the line. Two. Three. Four. And five. So before we're going to do anything else, we've got five number tens on there. I'm just going to flatten the line three times. And what that does is when I slide the shots over the top of it, it it's basically opens up the shot inside. And then when I want to slide the shots up and down, which you quite often have to do with hemp fishing, it doesn't damage the line. And I know that that line is going to be perfect. So we've made three flat spots. We're just going to wet wet the line there and we're just going to slide one, two over there, one, two, three 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 over there. If you're going to use a shot in tube, now's the time to obviously place it in the shot in tube and just to fine tune your rig before we cut this little three little nodules off. So I know that that's going to take five number tens, just going to bite that off get rid of that and then I'm going to make my loop so all my rigs I don't have any hook links on the actual rigs and I, I apply them once I get to the bank I can adjust it to whatever venue I'm fishing so all we're going to do then is just going to tie a loop in the end of the line and just so I mean there's loads of different ways of tying loops some anglers use a, a loop tire I just use a loop sizer this is just a diver one there's obviously others on the market the original ones were the same though and you've got four different size loops. Um, so for this fishing, I use the smallest one possible. Just gonna wet that. Gonna put the, the oval circle over the um, long prong and the round circle over the short prong. And I'm just gonna pull that up tight, slide the line off the first one, pull it tight. And I'm just gonna tighten that up again against that one. And then I'm going to get your scissors and we're just going to cut that nice and neat. Like so. So we've got the basics of the rig. So for my hemp fishing, I like to string it out. So I'm just going to just string that out. Bearing in mind we're only probably fishing in about two foot of water. Nice little strung out like that. Nice even bulk. You can just about see that there. All right. Then... Obviously, the best way of storing it on is you've got a little hook on your winder, so the loop goes over the hook like so, and then I'm just going to wind it on 12 times. One, two, just going to put some slack so that it's, the float slides three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, pile it off again, I'm just going to tie one big loop, I'm not worried about tying a two little loops and nice neat one because by the time I get to the bank I'm going to be shortening this down to exactly the right length that I want, so instead of wasting time tying a nice little loop that I'm going to be biting off, once we get on the bank, and then with these Preston winders obviously they've got the retainer on the side, put that on there, right on it exactly what main line and what pattern on the side of the winder and there we have it that's my uh, hemp rig for the drains um, hope you've enjoyed it <laughs>